An underwater portrait photographer is exactly what it sounds like. I take pictures of people underwater for a living in Billings, Montana. <laughs> now, nothing about that sentence should make any sense. There is no logical reason why I should have that career based in Billings. I do not own my own swimming pool, so I'm limited to shooting in places around Billings, Montana that I can borrow, which there aren't a lot, or I have to shoot outside in the lakes in Montana, which most of you probably know are positively freezing. So I can only realistically shoot about three or four months out of the year. Now, I should tell you, this isn't something I always knew that I wanted to do. I was never that person that was taking photography classes in high school. I didn't major in photography in college. I never had my camera on my hip. I'm always taking photos of people. That wasn't me. That's not how this got started. Now, I always dreamt of having a creative career. I always wanted a job I would be passionate about, but when I started college, I was told to major in something practical, something real, so you can get a real job that makes real money and have a real house and a family and everything that goes with it. So my first semester, I majored in aerospace engineering, which wasn't a great fit, so I switched. <laughs> to physics, and then biology, and then psychology, and all of this switching from one major to the next should have been a sign. I should have realized then this was the voice in the back of my head imploring me to please do something that I truly cared about, but of course I didn't listen. And by the spring of 2011, I was finishing up my internship for a master's program. I had already been accepted into medical school, taking the MCATs, was set to leave in the fall, and it hit me how unbelievably and utterly depressed I had become. I came home and I told my now husband, if I don't make a drastic change right now, if I don't do something creative and meaningful for a living, I'm going to collapse into myself like a dying star. And he agreed immediately. <laughs> Problem was, I didn't know what that was. So I made a list. I thought of every single creative job I could possibly think of. From actor, sculptor, painter, graphic designer, break dancer, any creative job in any creative field, it went on the list. And then I narrowed it down based on three criteria. One, I wasn't moving. My husband's entire family lived in Billings. I grew up in Montana. We both loved it here. We weren't going anywhere. Two, I wasn't going back to school. I had to accept the fact that any career I chose had to be something that wasn't going to add to my already current existing student debt of about $40,000. And three, I had to take anything off the list that I couldn't physically do. So starting a career as a ballet dancer at 27 years old with zero dance experience, I wasn't going to physically be able to do that. At the end of this process, I was left with four options. Writer, musician, cake decorator, and photographer. On a hunch, I chose photographer. I didn't even own a camera. <laughs> so I ordered one on eBay, and the instruction manual it came with was entirely in Spanish, which I do not speak, which meant a lot of lights on YouTube, researching buttons and knobs and settings and terminology and Googling actual phrases like how to take good photos. And at the same time, I was also researching how to build a business out of this. So who hires me for this? How much do I charge? How do I do any of this? I started taking photos of families and high school seniors. And then I gradually moved into weddings where I found I could make a pretty steady income. And weddings were kind of my jam for a while. And within a year, I had created a profitable business. Problem was, I was bored again. So I started experimenting with some more artistic forms of photography, and I found myself toying with the idea of shooting portraits underwater. I hadn't seen it done a whole lot, and it seemed kind of impossible, which is really attractive to me. But the more I researched underwater photography gear, the more I found that it was incredibly expensive. We had a mortgage. My husband was working as an assistant baseball coach at the time. We did not have a huge disposable income to buy this stuff, so instead, I thought I'd build my own. Now, I went through about six different prototypes, all of them failing miserably, mostly due to the fact that I, one, completely underestimated the amount of water pressure that resides just a few inches below the surface, and two, when it comes to conventional building materials, I found out that the term waterproof doesn't mean waterproof. <laughs> there were a lot of casualties. That's my camera and a bowl of rice. <laughs> Turns out that little trick for pulling water out of iPhones doesn't work at all with cameras. <laughs> 
But after about six months of experimenting, I finally had one that worked. And prototype number six, or Calypso, is made out of PVC pipe, super glue, and plexiglass. <laughs> to test it out, I brought it down to a local hotel that had a swimming pool, and I just pretended to be one of the guests and walked right to the back, <laughs> carrying something that admittedly looks very much like a pipe bomb. <laughs> and I just got in the water, I put my camera inside, and I attached an automatic shutter release so it would just keep firing and firing until the card filled up. I sealed it up, and I wedged it under the pool ladder, and I would go out in front and just dance around in front of it. And I would come over periodically and feel the sides, and if I couldn't feel the shutter vibrations anymore, I knew the card was full. So I'd pull it up, take the card out, I'd download it onto my laptop sitting poolside, and put the card back in and do this again and again and again. And Later that night, I went home, and I went through about 10,000 images. Only one was decent. Not great, but it was proof that it worked. <laughs> now, I should also mention, I'm allergic to chlorine. So <laughs> as I'm sitting at home going through thousands of images, my eyes were burning and swelling shut, my ears were ringing, my entire body was covered in some rash, and all for a photo that wasn't even that good. And all I could think was, this is awesome. If only I could do this for a living. And I thought, you know what, why the hell not? So I sat down and I made a list of everything I thought an underwater portrait photographer career might entail. What would this look like in reality? What kind of people would hire me for portraits? What businesses or industries could benefit from somebody with this particular skill set? And as I forced myself to answer these questions, this fantasy job that I had made up in my head 20 minutes ago started to become a very real, very tangible career right there on the paper. Everything I wrote down that day is exactly what my career is based on today. I now take a variety of underwater portraits, ranging from maternity to family photos, high school seniors who are surfers and swimmers, to underwater engagement sessions. I travel the world and shoot underwater advertising campaigns for swimwear and tourism. I work with modeling agencies and help them expand their model portfolios. And my favorite, I get to display my work in art galleries and license images to book covers and album covers. So often, we think of our passions as just fantasies, and we never dig any deeper than that. We remain unhappy and dissatisfied for years based on preconceived constraints of a career and a life we never fully explore. Chances are your dream business probably has a very realistic set of steps required to make it happen. And those steps will be difficult, those steps will be confusing. And if it's the first time you've ever contemplated turning whimsical fairy tales into a legitimate business, those steps will also probably seem impossible. But the longer we keep those ideas locked away in a box, the longer they remain just this mess of hopelessly complicated variables. So sit down, grab that pen and piece of paper, and work through those variables. And before you know it, you too may turn your dream business into your day-to-day -day reality. Thank you.